Hello, and in this video I'm going to show you the base setup of a sci-fi generator based on drawings. So the panel that I have here in Unity is based on these drawings I've made here. So let's get into it. So first what we need is a drawing of a panel. You can make something similar or you can go to create your own panels that you want. You can also create multiple layers of panels. Right here I have layer 1, 2 and a detailed one. So layer 1 will be representing the top part and layer 2 will be representing a support part for the panel. So once, once you got some panels, we can jump into Houdini and we can extract the information from this PSD file. So first of all, start with the geometry node. And in here, you are going to use the PSD trace node. Also, if you, if you were not able to see these nodes, you can go to the game dev tools and click on update or install the tools. So once you got this, we can select a file and we can give in the file. Then we can add a layer to extract. So I'm going to click on the plus icon and I want layer 1, which is this shape, which is of course similar to the shapes I have here. You could also see that the tool is going to add some of the vertex colors based on the drawing. But we don't we're not really gonna use that. Then we have some threshold value. So if I increase this, we can see that it's going to filter out based on the based on the grayscale values. So the idea is that the mid gray is sort of like the default value, white will be going up and black will be going down in value. So later I will have to extract these values as you can see. If I zoom a bit closer in, I can see that some of these shapes lost a bit of their main form. Like in here, I can see that they are more perfectly 90 degrees, but in here, it lost some of their shape. So we can go in advanced and we can lower some of the uh, resolution, uh, resample steps, and we can see that it's going to get a bit better. So I think around 3 should should be fine for this thing. What I can also notice here then is that it's getting quite a bit low poly and I don't want that, I want to create first of all something that's accurate to what I have drawn. So I'm going to use the, the 9 point threshold and I'm also going to lower this a bit and you can see that is getting more rounder. So if I would disable the points again, you can see that it's nice and round now. So then I'm going to repeat this step for the based on the grayscale values. So I'm going to change the threshold. So I know that other values are around this value. So around 1, let's say 1, 5, so that should be fine, and somewhere around somewhere around this value, so 0.35. And this is then the default. So I'm going to add one, and layer 1. So we can say layer 1, or what we can also do is we can I drag this in here and we can say uh, relative channel reference and then it's going to create a reference to this name so if I would change this now to layer 2 
it will automatically then both update both of them. So I'm gonna change the main one now. Also the settings I'm gonna I'm gonna see so point four four and this was point uh, one five so I can see the shape. We can also go into preview mode and go over the shapes to see if they are nice and so we can tweak the shape. But I think we should we should be fine. So I'm gonna add one more. I'm just gonna I'm going to add one more and copy paste the name again and also the value. And then go here to it was uh, 3.5. So we'll go now. This value should be should be fine. So this is then everything that we need for the the top panel. So so layer one, so we extracted everything from layer one. Now I want to repeat this process and I want to extract the information from layer two. So we're gonna just do the same here, only for layer two. So now we have this result, and I want to sort of like split them apart. So I'm going to use the split nodes, and by default there will be some groups uh, that come with this. So this is everything in layer one. So we can see that, and if I in the first selection, this is everything from uh, layer two in my uh, PSD file. So then we can continue splitting by using a blast node. If I click on the split node and go to geometry spreadsheet, you can see here now each number that will be representing the two different grayscale values. So number one is the first one, number two is then this one and so on. So we can take this attribute PSD layer number and I can use it in the blast node at the PSD layer number if it's one then I'm, then it's going to be filtered out but I'm going to delete non-selected so every value that is equals one is now going to be shown and this will be I'm going to do this three more times so I can see all the panels now and I will also have to continue for the other side which is the layer 2 and I have to start from 3 so this will be 4 then we have 5 and then number six then so this is just the planes so I want to extrude it or I can use the game dev ticket node and I can take in this value I also might be able to scale the panel, so I'm going to scale it uh, by 5 now, so we don't have to work with super small values, and I can do something like this, and this is a nice value for it. I also want that the panel is on top of the grid, right now it's like under the grid, so I'm going to use the axis align 
and I will and I only want change in the y-axis because that is the up axis here of Houdini. So it always stays on top of the grid. So even if I go back here and change it to one or higher, it always is going to align on the grid. So I'm going to copy this and then here I want port 1 and here I want 1.5. Then I can merge the results together. If I select them all and if I hold the Alt button and click on click and drag on one of the outputs and when I let go of my mouse I create a merge node for you. So it's a nice trick to easily get merge nodes placed for you. So you can see that this is already the base of the panels. So you can tweak the, the, the depth values if you feel like this is coming out too much. So for example to 5 may be better. I can also do a transform node and this can be used then as uh, I could use this then later on as overall scale of the panels what I also see here is that these shapes are not uh, aligned that great so I can go back in the PSD file and if I go back to this layer, my second layer, I can expand the shape a bit. So I'm going to expand it by one and I'm going to reload it. You can see that we can see that it's now uh, aligning way better and we don't have that line there. So this system, I can copy paste it to here. And connect these. And then we have the other result. And these again can be merged by holding the Alt key. And I can play around with the uh, transforms nodes to lay them on top of each other and you can already see the base shapes of the panel and then the next system that I want to build is a pipe system so let's say you can look through this these holes and then you want to see some pipes on the other side so if you have a if you draw a panel that is more open then you would be able to see more uh, more pipes so this is like the, the third layer so first layer is these panels this one is the supporting panel and then the third layer will be uh, for pipes so I'm going to start with a tube and it will be around the x-axis and I know that I scaled it 5 times so I can do height 5 and so it's the same size I'm going to already going to collapse this in the subnetwork Call it, call it pipe, pipes, and go in here. So I'm going to build a system that places pipes next to each other, and if they would change size, they would still fit next to each other. And for that, I'm going to use a loop, a for each loop. So if I type in for each 
with feedback. I'm going to use this one. And this is going to loop on based on this number. And I also want to change the gathering method from merging. So now it's going to loop 10 times on the nodes that are in this uh, for each block. So if I enable the points, we can see that we basically have 10 times this model now because this is the only thing that is in the loop now. So what I want is I want to create a system that calculates a point that is sitting next to this pipe. And I will start by using the bounds and this will calculate the bounds of an object. So if I would change the radius you can see that it's, the bounds are moving with it. So right now I want to select this side and no matter what the size of this tube will be, number 2 will always be here. So that's good to know. So I can just manually click it, press delete and invert the blast. So I have this node in. Then I want to fuse it. And I'm going to bring in the big value like 50. And I will be disabling the remove repeat vertices. And if I enable the points, I can see that there is a point now here being created in the middle of this plane. And this point is exactly what I needed. So this is the point on the side of each pipe. So each loop will be calculating a point that's on the side. So now I want to create some more pipes so I can copy paste this one and this one may be smaller this one may be even uh, smaller again and we can also have one that's uh, way bigger than the other ones. So we have three variations now. So I'm going to use a switch node then. So and with the switch node, I want to switch from randomly between these, this geometry. So I need a copy stamp node for this. And my points are this input and my first input is the geometry. So when I have put this in here, you can already see that it's kind of working. The only thing that I need to keep in mind is that the point, if I view the point again, the point is on the side. And if I copy a model, it's on the center that I copy the model. So if I again take the aligning and no change in this one, but I want to uh, use the min value here. It should be copying them next to each other. So right now it's taking only the first input. So if I go here and make some adjustment to the radius, you can see that it is going to fitting next to each other. But of course I want some more randomness. So I'm going to use a random attribute. And I call it here index. And I want to change from uniform continuously to discrete. And I want to change it to dimension 1 because then it returns 1 float. So if I go to the sprite sheet and to points, I can see my index is now number 5. So this number will be representing the number of what model to use in the switch node. So right now I have three models here. 
and they go from 0 to 2. So here from 0 to value 2. This index created, I can use this in the copy node here and enable stamps. Then type in here index. Then going to the switch, we want to get the information from the copy nodes. So I want to access the stamp value. So this is in the copy node. And then the information that I want is index. And then the last value is the default value. If something goes wrong, it will take always input 0. But we still see here that it's, that it's, it's taking always this one. And this is because of the seed value. Because every time it's the same number. So if I change the seed value, you can see it's going to change here. So what I need to do is I want to access the loop, the current loop number or iteration number. So I'm going to move this bit here. And in the first node of the loop, I can create the meta import node, which will create this node. And here, this has the information about the iteration number. And this is a detail attribute. So going here in options and pressing detail because we want to access the detail. So we want to get the information from the repeat metadata. Open this menu. And we want the iteration number. So iteration and zero. Then when I press apply, we can see that it is working now. So if I make a change here now in size, you can see that it's fitting nicely with the other ones. And this one is currently not being used. We can improve this a little bit more by making it more random and using the random expression. So now it's more randomized. Further, you could use something like number of frames by typing dollar sign F and press apply. So if I change the number of frames here, I can see multiple variations. So that's nice to work with in Houdini. Also notice that the beginning shape is actually not included. So I'm just going to merge it here afterwards. Then I can, for example, increase the number of iterations. And the more we have this, the more shapes you're getting, of course. Next, I'm going to filter out the shapes that are going too far. So a method of doing this could be assembling the geometry. And if I pack the geometry, each, each piece is now represented by one point. And this makes it easy to filter out some of the shapes that are being placed too far. So I know the panel is size 5, so everything that's bigger than 5 should be deleted. So I can use the point information in the spreadsheet here. So if the value is bigger than 5, everything that's bigger should be deleted. So we say at point dot c because they are lying around the c axis 
if it's bigger than 5, you can delete them. And you can see it's not really working now, but if you change the group type to points, we are now taking all the points that are in, f in the range of 5. To work again with this geometry, we have packed it here and we need to unpack it back again. So this was just temporarily for filtering quickly out the shapes that we don't need. Then what I want to do is to add some more details. I will be creating another loop and this one will be for each connected piece. So, we're going to loop over all the shapes individually, so 7. So we can see here, starting with this one. So I want to have some rings on the pipe, and I will be using transform. What I want to do is, I want to first center in object. So this is something that I made customly. So in the pivot I typed in these values and then once I typed in the values I can say save preset and name a preset and then every time you open this menu you can see at the bottom your presets. So what I want to do is scale this down to actually zero and zero and the reason for this is I'm going to do a scatter node now and it's, you can see it will create points in the middle of this object so 200 is maybe too much so I go for 5 and I'm gonna fuse them together if they would be too close to each other so I will be using uh, value point 2 and then changing the seeds here will create some variation. So if I put this in the output here, we can see all the points that's being created in the center of each one of them. And that's why I needed this pivot translation. So they are all nicely in the center. But you can see that the points are now placed uh, on all the same positions. So we'll be using again the meta import nodes. And in the seed value, we can again type in the detail. And we want the detail from the for each meta data. And we want the iteration and zero. And then you see that it's now more different. And again, we can improve this by making it more random and adding number of frames. But in here, I can just, for example, add number of frames. So if I change this, it's more randomized. So what I can do next is uh, use the base shape that I have here and use it in a transform again and I'm going to use move to center which is again this translation and what I want to do is I just want to squeeze it along the x axis so and the reason why I start uh, from here is because if I change here the number of columns the shape here is going to change with it so I have a simple shape and I will be using a bevel and I'm going to ignore flatten edges and filter out the edges on the side here then I will be changing the shape to profile and this is a nice feature and we can lower this to create something that looks like this. I might also have to scale this a bit up 
and now I can copy paste the shape onto this one, onto this point. So copy two points. Then I have to merge uh, with the original. And then we have this system. If I slide the timeline, we can see how much variations we are getting. And even though I, if I go here and I want lower resolution, well, we can see here that the body bevel is not holding up this correctly. So I can go here and increase this a bit more. They can also scale, so maybe these ones may be too large for now. So I'm going to scale them down. So get some variation there. We can also build more uh, variation in the models that we copy. I can actually use uh, this system here that I used here. So I can copy this and use it also here. So of course we are now going from 0 to 2 and right now we only have 1 so of you see like a small warning here. You can reference the amount of inputs in here if you type in OP so operator number of inputs and then you just reference the switch notes and that should do it but this will return one and the current value here is zero so we actually have to do minus one in here and we can see the, uh, the small warning here is gone so if I create a copy of this you can already see we have some variation in there so for example I can make this one smaller and this one uh, make it maybe bigger so it's some a more uh, more variation in there and then this this is then ready to merge here with the system. So now we have the pipes and we have to move this pipes in a better place. What I could do is using the axis align again and it's now more in the center and I could actually say that on the y-axis which is up and down take the maximum value so it's always under the grid And this is then the first part of the tutorial. In the next part, we'll be more cleaning up the shapes and creating a high poly and low poly.